what was a sketchy cheap buy, that ended up being one of your best purchases. And brand a Chinese carbon road bike frame set from AliExpress. These get debated constantly in the cycling community. Since they're so cheap, $500. Versus. Thousands for name brand, people are worried that they'll randomly explode and there won't be a warranty. I did a lot of research. Reading tons of forum threads. Then I realized what I wasn't seeing, almost any reports of these actually breaking. You can find tons of people who bought them and like them. Tons of people who don't trust them. But in all that reading I think I saw only one component failure. Not significant. Since brand name parts fail too. Two full seasons riding the bike hard on Nick streets. No problems. And I love it. It's light. Fast. Cheap. And people ask me about it all the time. Note. I bought a generic open mold frame. Not a replica. The ice maker didn't work on the refrigerator in my new home. And Bosch wanted $300 for the replacement part. I found what seemed to be the same exact part for $60 at an online appliance repair website I had never heard of. I gave it a shot and bought it through their eBay store so I could at least use PayPal. The eBay store was linked from their website. But used a completely different company name. The billing company through PayPal was yet another completely different company name. But they sent the part. And other than swapping one plastic piece from the old one. It fit and works perfectly. For reference. In terms of $230 is normally the price for a very low end 3D printer. So. I was a bit worried when I purchased my Ender 3 3D printer. For the 7 months I have been using it. The print quality has surpassed all my expectations. I recently did a test between my school's Lulz Bod Tez 6, a popular $5.0003D printer that I have seen quite a few YouTubers use, and the print quality was significantly better. The only downside is that there is no adapter I have seen that lets me do dual extrusion. But for a $230 printer, it just shows that you don't have to spend big buck to get a great print. I was at a music festival. Heading towards the porta potties to take a leak. A guy stopped me and asked if I wanted any molly. I said I only had a 20 and he said that's fine. I don't have any baggies so just open your hand. He proceeds to pull out a full gallon ziplock bag full of powder. Stuffs his hand in. Grabs a handful. And puts it in my hand. It had to be about 3-5 grams. He said have fun my dude and walked away. I turned around and went back to my group of friends. Said I have a surprise and opened up my hand. We had a fucking great night. I never did take that leak. A little over 2 years ago I bought a 2005 Ford Explorer with 260. 000 miles on it for $800. My husband and I have combed better mechanics through the past 2 years and thus saved a lot of labor. But parts never exceeded maybe 50 bucks at a time. We ended up taking out a title loan on it. Then last month. I was rear-ended and the truck was totaled out. With 283. 000, 000 miles on it now. And definitely running like it was nearing the end of its lifespan. We were worried we wouldn't even get enough to pay off the $1000 title loan let alone to replace the vehicle that I relied on for my self-employed work. But also for our family of six. To my utter surprise. They valued it at $4,500. Paid off the title loan. That we had only made one payment on. And still had $3,500 left. I was happy with the $800 investment lasting over two years. But technically we profited and it allowed us to replace it when it was on its way to needing replaced anyway. Colon. Close bracket. I randomly found a wedding videographer online and booked him for a very affordable rate for my wedding assuming it will and sort be very good quality. Two weeks after the wedding. He emails me a high quality. Well edited video. He had a drone I hadn't sought notice because he was outside of the venue getting b-roll with it before I even started getting ready for the big day. I was floored and now I recommend him to everyone who ever plans to get married ever. Edit. He has definitely upped his prices since then, he did the videography for my wedding last summer, and rightfully so. 
because he does great work. I bought a button down shirt from the thrift store in the mid 90s that I still wear today. The shirt if obviously even older. It doesn't have much wear on it either. I think it made of rayon and something else. The brand is Kmart. They don't make M like they used to. Not my purchase. But still one of the best. My brother gifted me a snuggy one year for Christmas. I had painstaking track down a bootleg album he wanted and he got me a buy one. Get one free. Snuggy. I didn't speak to him for weeks. I have routinely used that damn snuggy for every camping trip I've been on over the last 7 years. And I will tell you it has become the most useful gift I've ever gotten. My brother got me a snuggy one year. A big nightmare before Christmas snuggy. I think it might be purple. What a stupid gift. I was amused. But never really used it, it's a snuggy. Then he had to go and die. So of course I'm never going to get rid of this dumb purple travesty. My kids love it and I keep it neatly folded near the couch when it gets cold. I've used it a few times and I love it dearly because it reminds me of my brother's dumb teenage gift giving decisions. Edit. I'm really happy that this story resonated with so many people. Thank you for the gold and silver. And thank you for every comment. I read them all. 3. Went to a garage sale. Little girl was in charge. She's like 12. I don't know shit about turntables but she has a set on a table. I ask how much. She tells me 20 bucks. I ask her if they work. She tells me she has no idea. Her dad got new ones and wants to get rid of these. I wait for dad. She tells me he's sleeping. She says dude just take them. I'm like. No 20 can be right maybe 200? She looks at me like I'm stupid. Fine. It'll take them. I drive straight to a pawn shop and see what I can get for them. Or if they even work. They fucking work. Dude looks up prices and comes back with a $1200 offer. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. Edit. To clarify. This happened in one of the nicest neighborhoods in Plano. TX. I don't remember the brand. This happened like 7 years ago. One of those square. Window size. Box fans. Technically wasn't a purchase. I found it outside the dumpster of my junior year college apartment back in 2008. I'm a fan of airflow and white noise. So that fan ran 24 hours a day for nearly 11 years outside of when I was away on vacations and for brief periods in winter, most of that on the lowest setting. But I mean. There were long stretches of literally months plus where it wasn't turned off. Died earlier this year when I can only assume some critical component burned out. I'll miss you. Completely free thing that provided me a decade of a light breeze and air circulation. And X200B. Edit. Thank you for the gold. Internet stranger. Truly a silver lining for these dark and less air circulation times. Went camping and forgot knives for food prep. Went to local grocery store and bought package of three. Cheap. No name. Plastic handle pairing knives. Different sizes. Best knives in the history of the planet. They are still my main knives. Years later. I bought a fake wood. Plastic, mantle clock from Value City for like $10 because I needed something for my first apartment. I received a surprising number of compliments on it and was asked more than once if it was a family heirloom because it looked so old. It also lasted for like 10 years until some movers broke it. I was kind of proud of displaying that stupid cheap clock. Got a quote for a new central air conditioning unit from a dude on Craigslist. Installed. For less than one stroke three the price I was quoted by two other companies. Thought it was pretty sketchy. He told me spent 30 years in the industry building up and running a popular HVAC company which he sold for a few million bucks. He's bored in retirement. So he started a new company that's just him. He gave me a list of references with about 30 people on it. And I called a few of them. He got glowing reviews from the people I talked to. So I said okay. He still knows people in the industry and gets brand new units that were damaged in shipping. Still covered by warranty but for a fraction of the price. Units that actually fell off a truck. My unit has some scratches and the logo badge fell off. 
but that's all that's wrong with it. He installed it a couple years ago. And it's worked great since. And now my name is on his reference list. And occasionally someone calls and I give him a glowing review. One of the proudest finds in my studio. A $2000 heat press I found at a thrift store for $40. I just about fainted when I came across it. Thought for sure the price tag was meant to read $400, still a good price. Dut. That shit weighs like 100 pounds and was a bitch to move but there were 3 other people eyeing it so I wasn't about to just walk away because of the weight. That press has paid for itself many times over in the last 2 years since I got it. Love that thing. That store did not know what they had. I built my own mattress. I was online shopping and stumbled upon several mattress in a box companies such as Purple or Casper. I noticed that they consistently had diagrams on their websites that showcase the different layers of foam they used to construct their mattresses. I simply went to a foam wholesaler and in the dimensions of a queen mattress. I ordered different types of foam, standard, soft, memory, eggshell, in varying thicknesses. I stacked them all up on top of one another and have slept like a baby for the last two years. It cost me $300 as opposed to a similar mattress from an online site that will cost hundreds more. This fall I bought a 2014 Honda Accord with under 80k miles for $9.000 from a guy on Craigslist. His English wasn't the best and we barely looked over the car before buying it since it was starting to snow and we wanted to get home. The guy bought it from an insurance company because it had been totaled. I did have to get an alignment, $100, but other than that it's been perfect. I got a blanket as a gift from a grandparent when I was 14. It was clearly an afterthought gift they found in Walmart. My sister got her version of the same. And ended up tossing it after a while. However. For me. It keeps me the perfect amount of warm while being breathable and ridiculously soft. I have no idea what it is made of. But it went with me when I graduated and left the house. Covered me when I was doing 6 years in the US Air Forca. Kept me warm on those cold desert nights when I deployed. Kept my tootsies toasty when I studied through my bachelor's degree. Was on my bed the night of my wedding. Covered me and my kids when they jumped into bed with daddy. And will be keeping me warm tonight. Coming up on 40. And yes. I have a blankie. Walked into a pet store to left my spirits as my grandmother was undergoing open heart surgery. Saw a Jack Russell pup that was bigger than the rest of the pups in his pen. Decided to visit with a pup in a private room. Then he curled up in my lap and started coughing. At that point I felt like I couldn't leave him there but I didn't know it yet. So I asked the worker about him. Turns out he was 75% off because he was left over from another litter. Then they took off another 10% because I pointed out that he was sick. Impulsively. I bought him on the spot. I was a college student with no place of my own and I hid him from my parents in my car and my job for 3 days. Finally. I broke down and cried and confessed to my mom. She reluctantly said yes he could stay and this 6 little pup immediately did 7 victory laps around my parents house. I nursed him back to his energetic. Crazy. Spunky self. Long story short. 16 years later. After graduating with 3 degrees. Marriage. Kids. And the losses of my grandmother and dad. He has been with me through it all. He was recently diagnosed with cancer so our days are now numbered. But my discount dog will always be my best purchase ever. Close bracket. About a year ago. I used game store near me was selling surprise boxes of old console for $20. They were not guaranteed to work or have all their parts. Cords. Or controllers. And you were not allowed to pick up the box till you bought it, all sales final. Took my chances and got a fully working Halo Edition Xbox with all cords and controllers and had a few games with it. If I remember right it had Halo 1 and 2 as well as Fusion Frenzy and Forza. I wanted the Halo version when it came out but didn't have the money at the time so was very excited that I finally got it and was able to add it to my collection, Halo and gaming collection. I once had a guy come to my door carrying a duffel bag. He looked like he hadn't sought showered in a week and he immediately went into a spiel about the products he was selling. 
At first I thought it was for charity but the more I listened. The more I realized that he was homeless and trying his best to make an honest living selling magazine order stuff. Think Sky Mall. Door to door. So I listened to his whole pitch and I bought the least expensive item which was this weird foam sponge thing covered in chamois like material and damned if I didn't start use the fuck out of that thing. It was the sole cleaning product used in my bathroom for about 4 years until it finally fell apart. I sincerely hope that that guy turned his life around and has us living comfortably now because he really did me a solid. A 1985 T-top Firebird. It was advertised for 700 which piqued my curiosity. I went to the dude's house and it was right out front. This thing was mint. Not a hint of rust only thing missing was the stereo which raised a red flag for me. Was this thing stolen? I talked to the guy he said he had got the engine rebuilt by a friend backyard mechanic but he had messed something up and it wasn't running right. I said so. No rust. T-tops look brand new. Interior is a beautiful red. 5 speed. And holy shit there is a fire bad sandblasted and gorgeous art form on the back window. All that's wrong is a goofy motor for $700. If it doesn't start I'll give you $500. I'll take it. Wrote up the paperwork. I checked the VIN it all matched up and was clean. Got it home and took me 20 minutes to find the problem. ECM wasn't grounded properly. Fixed it for $2 started it up ran like a top. Sometimes you get lucky. Bought a box of crap at a yard sale for $10. One of the items in it was an old Simpson multimeter in original box. With original manuals. Dusty as hell. And unfortunately. Test leads were not in one piece. But the rest of it. After you wiped off the dust. You probably couldn't tell that it hadn't just come off the assembly line. Turns out it was a specific antique my dad had been looking for for a couple decades. And I came across one by accident. In mint condition no less. I know this will get buried but anyway. I had just moved and had no job but needed a car. So not exactly cheap but cheap for cars. I went to one of those pop up used car lots and I bought the cheapest truck they had for like $6 k from a guy named Biscuit. The car lot closed up shop like 6 months later and I figured I might get a good year or two out of it but here I am 6 years later and the thing's so still going like a champ. Thank you biscuit. Wedding rings from Amazon lol. We were stressed out and tired of spending money on wedding shit. And we wanted to save some for the honeymoon. 40 bucks later and he got a wood inlaid tungsten while I got a crystal inlaid rose gold titanium. We get compliments on them all the time and giggle to ourselves. My engagement ring is real and I cherish it but man does it make my fake out ring look legit. We meant to upgrade but never got around to it in the years we'd been married. Investment opportunity I was 13 at the time. Very nave internet wise and my parents were dangerously liberal with their kids holding credit card information, was surfing on a weird site and saw a link that promised a $600 payment to equal out to a 24. dollars payment in a month. Me being a nave little shit put the credit card info in it. To an anonymous site that I don't soft remember. Parents were livid. Tried for hours to get money back. No luck. Credit card company won't soft refund it because it's was authorized by Kijd for Sinkos or some weird shit. Anyway a few months later. My parents saw a transaction of $24.000 added to their account. Feel free to make theories. $8 rice cooker from Walmart. Best purchase ever. I always over or undercooked rice until we got this and at first we kinda underestimated it. But having a spot on the stove free and not actually having to monitor it and cooking perfect rice every time? Gold? Dude on let go sold us 3 win ice for $50. Seemed like an okay deal. He writes so I think I only have one set of cords. Double quote. He had one full set of cords. One almost full set, need to get the one that plugs into the TV, and asked as we were leaving oh hey. I have this box of wee stuff. I'll throw that in if you want it. Double quote. Nine wing emotes, in addition to the three he had with the win ice, a balance board. Nine games and a mysterious thing that we think is supposed to be a PlayStation item. It seems like we got a good deal. The balance board alone is $60 on Amazon. 
fear sauce this one hot wheels called the carbonator and it's sauce shaped like a bottle the coolest thing though besides the pun is that the spoiler is a bottle opener i get so many comments compliments on it especially since it's sauce a licensed product they make great gifts too it's sauce something different as well as something thesol use and the fact it's sauce only a dollar makes it one of the cheapest things you can buy besides shitty candy after typing this I realized it's sauce not really sketch, maybe if it was a matchbox lol, but still. Hands down one of my best cheap purchases. My wife and I got married in Jamaica and the resort where we got married had a photographer to take photos during our wedding. There was also a local on the beach who was snapping photos. After the ceremony he walks up to me and offers a roll of 35mm film for $50. Before SD cards and digital photography. The resort warned us of people trying to scam tourists. But we rolled dice and bought them anyway. We got them developed when we got home about two weeks later and they turned out to be some of the best photos we had of our wedding. My dog. He was free at a clear the shelter event two years ago. He came microchipped and had all of his shots. They even paid to fix him. Hassos the best dog. All he wants to do is play and cuddle. Didn't Sot have any trouble housebreaking him. He would rather wake me up at 2am than go in the house. Hassos so gentle with my kids that my youngest can stick his hand completely in the dog's mouth. Yes we discourage this behavior, and he refuses to close on the hand. Hassos a bit goofy and still doesn't Sot know how to politely walk on a leash but Hassos the friendliest dog ever. Hesol put himself between the kids and an adult if we saw playing fighting until Hesos sure it's us just play. Hesos super friendly but also warns us if he hears sketchy people outside. We thought we were adopting a small medium dog but Hesos 80 pounds of love now. Hesos so spoiled Hesol shoved my son off my lap as gently as possibly because although he loves a small human. He is the baby. Also a pair of zero dollars. 50 flip flops from Fred Sauce. They lasted my entire high school career with almost constant wear in the warm months. Those things went to the lake. Band camp. Initiation. And everywhere else. I almost cried when they broke senior year. It was like a sign my childhood was over. I recently went on a camping trip with friends. And we ordered these really cheap crab traps. They were rather small traps that when lifted would create a bucket of sorts. Not the kinds that you house sod toss in the water and leave for a long time for crabs to accumulate. Turns out. They were perfect for three impatient teenagers who wanted to lift them every six minutes. We ended up catching lots of crab and making a crab stew for dinner. Colon. Capital D. Was walking through a Sears about a decade ago. They made an announcement that you could get a free melon scuppleting thing if you watched a knife demo. I uh. Had no place to be. B. Liked free things. And C. Enjoyed melons. So I watched and got sucked into buying the knives. The knives are Ames balls. They're my sharpest knives to this day, though I've never sharpened them. And they've never bent out of shape despite me using them to periodically cut down small trees when I can't find my hand saw. Weighted blanket from a CVS. I needed last minute gift so I bought one for my boss. Turned out it was buy one get one. Boss lady loved it so I opened the second one to see what all the fuss is about and it is wonderful. It's like 50 bean bags sewn together and then covered in fleece. I like to be the little spoon and my girlfriend hates cuddling. So I'll let the blanket cuddle me. There is something about the bean bag weights that feels like you are being snuggled. I call it my hugging blanket. A desk. I found it on a local buy and sell group when I needed a place to work at home, it looked small and rustic and cute. But I figured for the price it sod be press board and I could replace it when the time came. When I got there. The seller showed me her brother sauce insignia in the desk. And told me her sod made it for her out of solid maple to the exact specifications of the space she needed, which turned out to be the same space I wanted to fill. She seemed sad to see it go but was downsizing her home and had no room for it. It's us beautiful. So well made. And it's all have it forever. Moving into my first apartment. Neither I nor my roommate had much money. We went to this sketchy second hand furniture store. 
and they had a washer and a dryer. Which we needed. The machines were way too cheap and the store owner only took cash because his store's bank account wasn't set up yet. My internal alarm bells were ringing. But I went through with the purchase anyway and he told me him and his grandson would deliver the machines Monday morning around 10am or so. Since the ATM only gave me $20 bills. I overpaid by $5. No big deal. Monday morning comes. And they deliver the machines exactly when they said they would. After a bit of installation difficulty, which I don't really fault them for. The machines worked perfectly. We never had any problems with them. And the delivery driver even gave me my $5 in change from when I bought them. I'm still surprised at how well that worked out for us. I went on vacation to Europe this summer. And at the top of the Spanish steps there was this guy trying to sell a laser pointer that had a kaleidoscope attachment thing. He mostly just showed the cool lighting effects of the kaleidoscope. But occasionally took it off and the light could reach all the way to the Vatican. I showed slight interest. Simply because the kaleidoscope lighting reminded me of some cool decorative lights my family used to have that I used all the time. The second I showed interest he just kept trying to get me to buy it. Starting from somewhere from like 30 euros. And I kept saying no. He asked how much I would be willing to pay. I said 5 euros. He first gave a reaction that visually said now nah, you're wasting my time. Then seconds later he agreed. I struggled a bit to get the money out of my pocket and he just said to give me whatever I had in my hand. And I asked if he was sure. And he said yes. So I got a laser pointer for 4 euros and a rock. Works quite well. Super fun to mess around with. And gives me a bit of nostalgia for simpler days. Someone was getting rid of a bowling ball. 10 pounds. My 12 YO brother bowls a 10 pound ball so I picked it up for him. He likes bowling casually. He ice and not very active. But I encouraged him to do a school bowling intramural that I did when I was in middle school. At the end of the final session they got sandwards. S and my brother got most improves and most points bowled. So he was so proud and I know bowling may not be his passion or something he puts a lot of effort into. But I hadn't sort seen him glowing that much ever. It just made my heart warm that some old sauce trash made my brother a sauce weak. I had been looking for a 2012 MacBook Pro for the last month or so. For those who don't know. The 2012 Pro model was the last that was fully upgradable. Not only can you upgrade the RAM and hard drive easily. But you can replace the optical drive with a caddy with a second hard drive. Allowing you to set up a RAID array and greatly improve hard drive times. With 16 GB of RAM and 2 solid state drives. It can beat the newer MacBook Airs in a lot of tasks and is on par with recent Pro models. 2. The model I was looking at normally goes for $300 to $350. And that's without all the upgrades mentioned above. I was perusing eBay and saw someone had posted one for $135. 00, zero as a starting bid. With local pickup and no picture. The listed specs. 8 GB. 250 solid state drive. User with 2 feedback, it just looked sketchy as hell. But feeling lucky. I messaged the seller with 12 hours left. And he replied that although I lived 400 miles away. He'd be willing to ship if I won. I placed a bid. And got it for $137. 50. When it arrived I was expecting the worse. It came in a MacBook Air box. With the word Air crossed out and Pro written next to it in Sharpie. But when I opened it up. It was exactly as listed. Perfect condition. A new battery with only 20 cycles. 8 gigs of RAM and a 250 gigabyte solid state drive. I'll get around to upgrading it eventually. But even as it is it's a solid machine for audio and video editing. For much less than I had expected to pay. No one will see this. But a friend of mine was at a hippie fest back in college. It was the last day and people were leaving. Random hippie dude asked my friend if he wanted to buy some acid. It was a full ass sheet for a really low price. He only bought one. Assuming it probably wasn't the best because it was so cheap. It was the best acid he ever had and often regrets not buying it in bulk. I had a wish I bought it one. 
Dude at a gas station was going around trying to sell some protective car stuff. Walks up to me. Tells me what this stuff is and sprays a patch about the size of a salad plate on the trunk of my car before I can get a word in edgewise and tell him off. Because really? He eventually wanders off to the next car. And I finish filling up and go home. Keeping an eye on this spot for the next several weeks because I fully expect a rusty hole at some point. At the time. My home parking spot was under a couple trees. So it was often victimized by birdoo and sticky tree sap and what have you. Was in need of a bath far more often than it actually got one. Sadly. Except the test spot. It was fucking impervious to everything. You could even feel the difference. I have no idea what this stuff was or even if I'd recognize it if it shows up again.